One of the most important aspects of our health is not just how much we weigh or how much extra energy we're carrying around on our body, but what we eat. Different types of foods have different responses and pathways that they activate inside of our body. So while it's true that when it comes to actual weight, energy balance or calories are still king, but when it comes to health or the inner terrain of your body, what you eat makes a huge difference. In today's video, I'm gonna give you my four main reasons that I I prescribe and adhere to a mostly plant-based diet. First, let me just define a little bit about the difference between a vegan diet and a plant-based diet. So a vegan diet is any diet that doesn't consume any animal products at all. Adherents of a vegan diet often have personal ethical reasons for adhering to this diet, but frequently also health reasons. A whole food plant-based diet allows a little more room for flexibility. It really can refer to any diet where the majority of your food and calories come from whole unprocessed plant foods. So you don't have to be a vegan per se to still adhere to a whole food plant strong or plant dominant or mostly whole food plant based diet. So my first main reason for adhering to a whole food plant based diet is weight personally love to eat. I'm a volume eater. I'm actually a pretty tall person. I'm 5'10". I like to use that as an excuse for why I like to eat such big volumes of food. When you eat mostly whole food plants, you can actually eat a large volume of food for a relatively small amount of calories. This is because of something called calorie density. Calorie density is just a measure of like how many calories are shoved into this food. And some foods have a lot of calories in a very small space, whereas other foods have a very low calorie density. So you can see from the chart here that this chart is adapted from the incredible work of dietitian Jeff Novick. You can see that eating to the left of the line means that you consume a lot of foods that are big, physically bulky, fill you up, and don't contain a ton of calories. So most people find that when they begin to shove more plants into their diet and they begin to shove out some of the things that are listed there to the right of the line, which are really calorie dense, they naturally begin to create a calorie deficit and lose some weight. Now you'll notice that there are some really healthy things over to the right of the line, like nuts. These are foods that I recommend you portion control because it, let me tell you, it is really easy to throw down a thousand calories of some salted nuts. So in addition to weight control, my second reason for adhering to a whole food plant-based diet is reducing my risk of disease. Maintaining a healthy body weight and consuming a ton of fruits, vegetables, beans, whole grains, nuts, and seeds has been associated in many, many studies with reduced incidence of really three of America's top killers, heart disease, cancer, and diabetes, and its side effects. This is probably because plants are loaded with fiber and phytochemicals. Fiber is a carb that is not absorbed in your GI tract. Fiber-rich diets have been associated with health in hajillions of scientific studies. They've been linked to lower risk of heart disease, lower risk of colon cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer. They help regulate your insulin, your blood glucose, your insulin, insulin sensitivity and insulin resistance. They help carry out extra cholesterol and extra hormones like estrogen, lowering your blood levels of those. Fiber also just helps make you feel full and satisfied. Other component that's really plentiful in a plant-based diet are these magical little chemicals called phytochemicals. So phyto means plant, chemical means chemical. Phytochemicals are known to be antioxidants and disease fighters, and a whole food plant-based diet is loaded with them. So not only is a plant-based diet high in and compounds that have been shown to help with disease, but it's also very low in compounds that have a very sketchy track record with human health. Diets low in saturated fat of animal origin, trans fats, and highly processed foods have been linked to great health. These foods are felt to be pro-inflammatory. In fact, you can check out this cool database called the DII or the Dietary Inflammatory Index. The link is down below in the comments. And you can see the dietary inflammatory score of a jillion foods. So plant-based diet is reducing my risk of overweight and obesity. It's helping regulate my insulin and my glucose reducing my risk of certain cancers, specifically colon, breast, and prostate. Well, not me for prostate, but you know. And for more ideas about prevention of breast cancer, check out my video on that. It's dramatically lowering my risk of heart disease, which is the number one killer of Americans, and reduces my risk of stroke, Alzheimer's, and other cognitive diseases. And finally, the fourth reason that I adhere to a whole food plant-based diet is, this is a little embarrassing, vanity. There is some evidence that the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant compounds in a whole food plant-based diet actually slow the signs of aging in our skin. 
Plant-based diets are loaded with vitamins, specifically A, C, and E, which help maintain skin health, which help maintain skin health and clean up some of the oxidative damage that our skin goes through every day, which can result in more aging. A plant-based diet also eliminates a lot of carcinogens and gerontotoxins. I just relearned that word today. I'd completely forgotten about it. Gerontotoxins. What is this? These are chemicals that promote aging in the skin. Geron means elderly. Toxins means toxins. So gerontotoxins. Whatever. Plant-based diets have even been shown to lengthen telomeres. What's a telomere? A telomere is like this little protective plastic cap on the end of our chromosomes. Telomeres degenerate and start to unravel and disappear as we age and certain toxins in the environment as well as genetics can accelerate that process. Whole food plant-based diets as well as some other cool lifestyle interventions like even meditation have been shown to slow the degradation of telomeres and telomeres are one of the things that scientists look at to assess how old your cells are or how you're aging. So just keep in mind that on average, plant foods have 64 times the antioxidant concentration of non-plant foods and the colorful ones are loaded. There's some other observation studies that I've posted below that show that healthy diets are correlated with younger looking complexions. So how do you even get started with a plant-based diet? If this sounds totally overwhelming to you, just take it one little bit at a time. Here's a great food prescription that one of my super smart doctor friends kind of made up and has had a great deal of success with. Think about this as your food prescription. Three fruits a day of three different colors, one salad that has no meat, no cheese, and no creamy dressing, and one cup of beans. Any type will do. If you're interested in learning more about a nearly plant-based diet, another resource that I really like is the AICR, the American Institute of Cancer Research. They have this cool graphic called the New American Plate, and it just shows how traditionally so many of us grow up with a giant hunk of meat in the middle of a plate, right? Like we plan the whole meal around the meat. And I love this graphic because it just shows you how you can kind of shrink that and think of meat as a side dish as you're transitioning to a more whole food plant-based diet. So if you're still wondering what in the world do people eat on a plant-based diet, just drop that in the comments below. What do y'all eat? And I'll be making more videos about that. So stay tuned.